Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. Now, um, this is a uh, pretty interesting article that I just uh, came across, as I'm always coming across these articles. But anyway, um, this one in particular is what led me to title the video uh, what I titled it, right? Which here says, Houthis vow escalation despite U.S. strikes could sabotage Western internet cables in Red Sea. Okay, and when you read this, um, this article, I'm just going to hit the point, the main part of importance. And now I'll, I'll leave a comment with this, with the link to this article in the uh, comment section so you can read it yourself. But basically, we know that over the past, you know, a few days, the U.S. along with the U.K. have been, you know, hammering uh, Houthi positions in Yemen and different areas, um, taking out what they call Iranian-backed, you know, targets. And this was the response by the Houthis, says here, a Houthi spokesman, uh, Yahya Sari, responded soon after on Sunday, saying these attacks will not deter us from our moral, religious, and humanitarian stance. In support of Palestinians in Gaza, he vowed that it won't pass without response and punishment. Now, as we go down, they pretty much said, right, additionally, room, uh, Bloomberg has cited members of the Houthi political council to say the group now considers that there's open war and that its military capabilities remain undeterred. Though this isn't the first time the Shia group has declared war on Israel and its backers since October 7th. So they're pretty much saying, look, this you, you can strike all you want, but that's not going to stop us. Right. We're, 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 we're ready. We want this. But what what now people are starting to be concerned about is not just them retaliating with attacks in the Red Sea and attacking commercial vessels, but now they have potential to do a bit more damage, right? So it says here, meanwhile, the Houthis are touting um, that they have more tricks up their sleeve and ways to quote-unquote punish the Western coalition and those supporting Israel. Telecom or tele telecom firms linked to the UN-recognized Yemen government have said they fear Houthi rebels are planning to sabotage a network of submarine cables in the Red Sea, critical to the functioning of the Western Internet and the transmission of financial data, The Guardian reports. Now, I'm going to explain why exactly this is such a big deal and, you know, how exactly they could do a lot of damage if they do actually, you know, set up some some mini campaign like this to go down there and, and uh, sabotage this uh, these these submarine cables that can do a lot of damage okay now let me read a little bit more and then I'll explain according to the specific Houthi threat the warning came after a Houthi linked telegram channel published a map of the cables running along the bed of the Red Sea the image was accompanied by a message there are maps of international cables connecting all regions of the world through the sea. It seems that Yemen is in a strategic location as internet lines that connect entire continents, not only countries, pass near it. Yemen Telecom said it had made both diplomatic and legal efforts during the past few years to persuade global international telecom alliances not to have any dealings with the Houthis since it would provide a terrorist group with knowledge of how the submarine cables operated. It has been estimated that the Red Sea carries about 17% of the world's internet traffic along uh, fiber pipes. Um, it says here, any potential operation to sever the submarine cables, but which are sometimes no thicker than a garden hose, would likely be a sophisticated, deep underwater technical campaign but is widely believed that the realm of possibility, given uh, 
it's it's widely believed within the realm of possibility given the Houthis determination thus far. Now they're saying that basically what's kept those cables safe is not that the Houthis didn't have intentions or like they, they couldn't do it, but more so their uh, technological underdevelopment. Okay, but now with their drive and their motivation, well, I mean, like it says in this last part right here, um, if already the Houthis have no fear of launching anti-ship missiles at U.S. and U.K. Uh, Navy destroyers, then certainly they could have their eyes next set on sabotaging the globe's internet infrastructure. And it's likely only a matter of time. It's interesting how there was that... Uh, um, that uh, movie, Leave the World Behind, where there was this like cyber attack, right? Now, the reason this is such a dangerous thing is because the when you look at these pipes that are actually, you know, these fiber optic cables that are run across the, the, the floor of the, you know, the ocean all around the, the world, right? I pulled up this image here. So I'm going to zoom in on that. Let me zoom in a bit more. These pipes, okay, or these uh, um, cables are underwater, right? And typically in like fiber optics, they, they use those cables, which are like special kinds of cables that are actually designed to, you know, carry information, right? Like today you could plug like an Ethernet cable to into your computer and plug it into another, like your router or your modem or something, and it'll send, you know, information back and forth. Well, that's pretty much what they do on a world scale. Typically, when people think of the internet, they think of something like this, like the cloud, right? You think of like something that's just up in the air somewhere, and you just connect to it. You know, everybody just connects to it, and that's called the internet. You know, now I got internet, you got internet, we all got internet. But all the internet is, is literally like, sh th this is just a shortened way of saying inter-networking. Okay, so you basically have, in your house, right, you, your network is considered like, you know, your different computers and your phones and all of that. When you have like a phone, a smart TV, a laptop, you know, a router, and they're all connected, either via like Wi-Fi or, you know, actual cables, that's a network. That's what you call a network. So in your house, I'm sure majority of us, if not all of us, have a network in our house. And then just like that, your neighbor also has a network, right, over here. And then maybe your friend in New Jersey or Cali somewhere also has their network over there and in between all of your networks are routers that's the, the job of a router is to route information from your network to somebody else's network so say you want to send a picture to your friend who's in like uh, Tennessee you're gonna you're gonna click like I don't know send and that information is gonna be sent to your router your router is gonna send it to somebody else's router is gonna send it to another router and it's gonna just pass it on through different networks till it gets to your, your friend in Tennessee's place, right? So the importance of understanding this is that this is pretty much what the internet is, right? Your computer sends information or your phone sends information to somebody else's phone via the internet, either via a router, which is at some point connected to, to like some wire, right? Because that's how the data travels. Now, when you deal with this, right? This, these wires that they've laid on the ocean floor, these wires carry information from continent to continent, okay? The internet is not magic. It's connected. You connect some giant computer in some area to another giant computer in another area, but you connect it via like these wires, right, which carry that data across. This is how the whole globe is able to be connected. So this is how you are able to like, log on and go to like, I don't know, YouTube, even if you're in like some foreign country and get access to it because they've connected all or majority of the globe via these underwater cables right here that give you service. So if the Houthis say, well, you know, we in a good strategic position, I believe this is where Yemen is somewhere around here. We in a good strategic position. I mean, look at all these cables that go through here. If they decide to go and sabotage something like this, guess what? You may be getting some information from, I don't know, some part of the world over here or some part of the world over here, somewhere over here. The second they sabotage this, that cuts off your, your service. 
you know, that information is not able to travel. You know, they can almost sever a portion of, you know, the, the, the world from reaching another portion of the world. You know, when they talk about like, you know, uh, uh, cutting that off, that's kind of like uh, going back to this image here. You see these connections here? That's like if they cut this and they cut that, you don't have internet access anymore. You're not a part of the this network, right? So you can't send or get any information from here, 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 here. That's like how somebody can isolate you from the internet. They just cut you out. You can't connect to anybody else. You're done, okay? That means when you try to send a text to this person and it's like, oh shit, I can't reach this person, whatever, because you're not connected to it anymore. So that's pretty much like on a very high level how the internet works. It's not like just some some something like this, right? Where everybody just connects to some random magical cloud in the air. It's just different networks that are connected to each other. So this can do a lot of damage if they decide to say, oh, we're going to take some time, understand you know, enough about how this works to be able to sever some of these, these fiber optic cables that carry that information across the globe and keep everybody connected, right? Like we read down here, somewhere down here mentioned that, um, yeah, there's about 17% of the world's internet traffic is going through there, right? So if they cut that, well, I mean, depending on the, the amount of damage it's going to do, it's, it's definitely going to be some, some very, uh, you know, crippling. It's going to be crippling to, a, to an extent because there's a lot of either like, you know, business that's going on, like literally every second, so many different companies are all, right now the world is connected. Somebody can be making transactions or deals all across the world and all of that stops just like that. And it's not just like financial things, it, you know, it can even be health related. Okay, all that data, you know, now there's a problem going on. And it's not like, oh, you know, you called Verizon. They said, oh, yeah, there is something down in our area. In a couple of hours, we'll, we'll have it fixed. This is on the ocean floor. Okay, so it, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a pain to have to say, we need to, because how long is this cable? When we read it, it said like, one of the most strategic is the 15... <laughs> Yo, the 15,500 mile Asia, Africa, Europe, AE-1 that goes from Southeast Asia to Europe via the Red Sea. That's a long, a very, very long cable. So if they cut that, you don't just go, oh, well, let me go and try to, you know, uh, go in here and then get some tape, some duct tape and try to wire it together. The material that is used to make these cables once you once you sever that, you got to replace that. Now imagine trying to replace some uh, man. I mean, it's just gonna be bad. All right, it's gonna be bad. So, I mean, let's see. Maybe they do it. Maybe they don't. But the fact that they are raising this as a as a potential way to go. Remember, if you were if you were like the Houthis, for example, and you were in this position, and you're like, all right, we're striking vessels in the Red Sea. These people are bombing us in our different areas. Obviously, they have a stronger military capability. They can do a lot of damage. But how else can we do a lot of damage to them? We may not be able to go and shoot nuclear missiles and hit their land, but we can hit them hard if we do something like this. You know, so, I mean, hey, let's see. Let's see. The scriptures say, let me, let me actually get that real quick. And, you know, we live in a, in a, a digital age, so... You know, it can't help to learn, you know, a little bit about, you know, some surface level stuff about how these things work. Um, watch. Cool. This is the book of Matthew chapter. Uh, which one do I want to? Mm, it's a lot of good. No, let me just read this one. Right. This is uh, Matthew 13 and uh, Mark 13 and 33. Take ye heed, watch and pray. For ye know not when the time is. And there's many other scriptures that are there, right? Telling you to watch as well as pray. You know, so the scriptures also tell you in the Apocrypha not to be ignorant of anything in a small or great matter. So what seems like, oh, yeah, I mean, but what are the chances of that happening? You still got to watch it, you know, and be aware. Because sometimes out of nowhere, something happens, boom. You know, and it might be related to something. Oh, yeah, I was reading about something like this about a week ago. They said that. This was a potential thing that they could, oh, shit, you know. So you're not in the complete 
darkness, you know, but it's our job to continuously watch, you know, and, 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 and pay attention to what's going on around the world. OK, because these things are going to affect you one way or another. But anyway, with that, I'm going to end it here. Low willing that was edifying and informative to the elect. Let's watch and see what happens. You know, maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't. But if it does, you know, it could it could cause some some damage. All right. But with that, I want to give all praises, honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechak, Kudash. Until next time. Shalom.